this second video focuses on color. As you can see, three portraits here. This one being the most finished. So I can show you uh, how important it is to have your lights and your, these are called highlights. This is where the the light would hit and it, it helps to make things pop, look like they're popping out of the page, giving it a three-dimensional look. Again, your darks and lights. You remember when we did uh, demonstrate the fruit bowl and how your darks and lights help to make things pop out of the, the page. So you've got to have those in there. We, we really don't even need the uh, pencil marks anymore. We, if you want things to look realistic, we don't have pencil marks uh, around us. So it is the color that and the uh, differences between the lights and the darks that bring out the edges of our portrait or anything we're drawing. You see the long here in the shoulder? There is no pencil mark there. It's um, the color of her suit is creating the edge of that suit. <clears throat> so, um, this is where I started to add the brown of her skin and I also are, am, am going to add a little bit of red and orange to it because she has a warm tone to her skin and so I'm going to mix a little bit of color. I start out very very light with this with this brown and notice that I can put in her um, the wrinkles in her face with a little darker brown I can put in the, the little saggy area over here just by using a little darker brown there and notice I'm going to get rid of the pencil lines The difference between the dark under on her neck and the light on her chin creates the edge of her chin. The dark of her skin, the color of her skin, creates the edges of her face, not pencil. So we get rid of the pencil. I'm going to come back in and put a little bit of brown there. Okay, so I have taken my crayon and I've created a, a brown with a little bit of darks and lights shading down here where I have dark for the the neck area. I don't want to see a line here. You can see where I've created a dark and then a light. So to get rid of that, we want to blend those two colors in together. So I just kind of run my crayon very lightly over that edge or the, that where it's creating a line and that helps to get rid of that line there. Do you want that to be a smooth transition from dark to light? Up here, this is how we create the nose. You know, if you, these dark areas here, pull your eye into the picture, anything you want to make look going into space, going into the picture is going to be dark. Anything you want to pop out at you is going to be light. So we left a little light area on the lip. As you see right here, there's a light area on the lip. So I just went ahead and left that there. You don't put any color right there. I'm going to erase the lip line here and put that in with a brown. I'm 
I'll erase whoops, this bottom one and put this line on here and here. So we can color the lips brown to begin with and then we'll add some a little bit of color. This middle line here can be very dark because that middle line is created with the two lips coming together. And you see how that light area there helps to make the lips look like they're popping out. The lip creates a little ledge there, the bottom lip, and there's a little bitty shadow right under there. So put that little bitty shadow under that lip, and I'm not making it look real dark, just light enough. So I've got that. Now with that dark area there and that light there, that really helps that bottom lip poke out. Right in here is a little lighter, so let's not put any more crown right there. That's a little lighter right in that area. Okay, I don't know if I can erase all these lines in the nose area. Try. Yummy nose eraser. Okay, that looks pretty good. Got that line here. Down. This line here helps create the edge, the roundness of the of the nose over on this side, over on this side. It's really, really dark right in there. Really, really dark right in there. That helps to really bring your eyes into your picture. Don't forget those eyebrows way up there on her forehead. That really is a, a, a trait of hers that helps us to really make it look like Dorothy height. We need we need a, a little line here. These lines I'm putting in now, these are make her look a little older. Now We've got the brown base, but again, like I said, she's got an, a, a warm undertone to her skin. So I'm gonna bring get my red, and I'm very lightly. I'm not very. I'm not pushing down very hard, hardly touching the paper at all. I'm putting in a little bit of red over my brown. Now I did make a mistake right here. There should be a light the end of her nose and the current this actually hmm that worked actually the um the bridge of the nose would catch a lot of the light so that's got to be light there see so if you've got a you're using crayon and you have an eraser see if you can't erase a highlighted area right here that's real important to make that nose pop out. Okay, now I'm going to put in a little bit of orange on top of that. Very lightly. We don't want to make her look orange. We just want to blend these two colors together. Actually, these three colors together. Very hardly touching them at all. Okay, that's a nice color. That's really pretty. It's a pretty brown. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead put in some curls over on this side of her head and nose. I'm just making some wavy lines. I'm not trying, I'm not coloring it in all black. Just bringing some wavy lines for some curls. Now I'm going in and I'm going to put in some brown with that, mix some brown with that black. So we can make it look like we can see the lines that the hair would make. Okay, and then once you get most of this done here, the face, the shadows, the rest of that is pretty easily um, colored in. The hat. You want a really bright, vibrant color because she was known for wearing very bright hats. When you put in the beads, she she wore lots of matching beads. Her hats and her her beads matched, and she'd have these these uh, flowery big old flowers on on things. Sometimes on her hat, sometimes on her on her suit that she wore. Really um, matching hat, beads, flower, and then she'd have a different color suit like this right here. So her hat. And her beads and her flowers match. That's a, a very um, known trait. Um, so that would help us to recognize a drawing of her. Um, I like the way she's smiling in this one a little. Oh, better than um, this one. You need to add a little bit of color to her lips. And at this point, to help her smile, you might want to put in some lines going up. Uh, she's not really smiling much there, is she? That's all right. are a lot bigger there than they are this one, but that's okay. Okay. So, um, let's see. I'm going to use a blue her hat. Don't forget to each one of her beads nice and round about the size of a dime. Come down and then around. Just drop very lightly every bead and color. Draw and color every bead separately. Don't color in one big Blob because you want to see these now. Remember how we colored our apples? 
in our fruit in our fruit basket we had a dark a dark side and a light side and a highlight so we had the actual color of the bee the highlighted area with no color and then the dark side and that helped those look very very round so I haven't finished covering those I think that's enough of an expl explanation of adding color to your Dorothy Height portrait. I can't wait to see your pictures. I'm putting in the shadow with the blue. Remember, that's what we did when we did the fruit, too. We put in the shadows, and so, you know, we, sometimes we think, oh, we got to do a shadow that goes in black, but a lot of artists like to use blue for their dark areas for shadows instead of black. And won't take away from the color. Okay, so keep keep working on the color, and and we'll come in and look at those later.